Hi, and welcome to the Cult of Crafting. My name is Michael, and today I'll show you how to make a missile silo. This will be the sixth modular tile I make for this channel. Let's begin! I start by sketching out the hatch to figure out how big it's gonna be. I want to make a sliding hatch that will split in the middle. Next I'll make the rails that the two doors will slide on. I'm gonna make these out of 2mm medium weight chipboard, but I'll wait until I've figured out how long they need to be before I glue them together. I'll mark out the center of the wide piece where I'll glue on the narrow piece later on. The doors themselves I'll make out of XPS foam that I'll cut on my Proxon hotwire table. I'll also use my Proxon to make the grooves for the rails. The silo will be placed in a small hill, and I'll make some plaster rocks that will go around the edge of the hill. I'll use my rock molds from Woodland Scenics. As you can see, you don't need to fill the rock mold completely. You can just fill some of it to make a part of a rock. For the entrance of the silo, I'll use this door from Necromunda that I painted up years ago. It's a bit too tall, so I'll have to shorten it. I'll use my craft saw from Tamiya. This is a very handy tool that I use in a lot of my videos, so if you don't have one, I can highly recommend getting one. I cut up some XPS foam that will act as concrete barriers that will sit alongside the door. Now I'll mark out where I want them to be, so we can start shaping the hill. I used my Proxon to remove the wedge where the door will sit, but I'll just use a craft knife to slope the hills. It's a lot messier to use a knife, but sometimes it's just more convenient. I decided to round the corners on the back of the hill so it doesn't look too square. In the past I've had some problems getting hot glue to stick to plaster rock, so I thought I'd try using PVA glue this time. Incidentally, it turned out that this off-brand Pringles can had the right dimensions for a launch too. Speaking of which, over on the Discord channel we are running a terrain challenge this month where you have to build something made out of a Pringles can. So if you think that might be fun, come join us. I'll leave a link in the description. I used the can to mark where I wanted the launch tube to go, and it felt as if I might be able to push it all the way through the foam, but in the end I could only manage about an inch. So I cut away the rest with my craft knife. Then I marked off how much of the tube I'd need, and I cut away the rest. To give some texture to the pieces of XPS foam that were supposed to look like concrete, I rolled up some tin foil into a ball and rolled that over the XPS foam. To make the foam more durable, I gave it a coat of Mod Podge mixed with black paint. Afterwards I went outside and primed it white. 
After the PVA glue had dried, I started removing the excess plaster rock, mostly using my clippers, but some of the larger pieces I scored along the foam so I could break them off. Unfortunately, the PVA glue wasn't much better than hot glue, so a lot of the rocks came loose. We'll fix that later. I considered keeping the reflective inner coating of the Pringles can, but I decided against it and primed it a random color. I'll paint it black later on. Now that I knew the dimensions of the hill, I could continue making the rails. Starting by figuring out how long I wanted the individual pieces to be. And I glued the two pieces together using PVA glue along the line that I marked out earlier. Even though PVA glue doesn't usually dry fast, it's very quick to bond with cardboard. Then it was time to glue the rails in place, which was a lot more fitly than you'd think. I used the slots on the silo doors as a guide to place the rails. Since the foam doesn't absorb PVA glue the same way the cardboard does, it gave me a lot of time to make adjustments. I cut out a base of 3mm MDF and I used PVA glue to glue the hill in place. And then I glued all the concrete pieces in place. Before sticking the plaster rocks back into place, I roughed up the surface to give them a better grip. To put the plaster rocks back into place and to fill the gaps between them, I decided to try using modeling compound from Geek Gaming Scenics. It's a mix of paper fiber and plaster. I've made my own in the past, but I've never tried this particular product. Once the modeling compound dried, it did hold the plaster rocks in place like I'd hoped. It worked well as a gap filler and it was pretty easy to blend with the rocks. Another benefit is that since it contains plaster, it takes paint the same way as the rocks do. I wanted to improve on the old paint job on the door to the silo. Basically I just stippled some rust colors on the door with a piece of sponge and an old stiff brush. My plan was to add more rust, then using a chipping medium and another layer of paint to make it look weathered. But I liked the rust effect so much that I decided to stop there. To dull down the white base coat of the launch tube doors, I gave them a wash of a heavily diluted brown paint, and then I wiped most of it away again, which gave it a little color and some texture. Then I proceeded to stipple the same rust colors I used before, focusing on the edges. This looked a little too uniform, so I used a paintbrush to make some larger chipped areas and some scratches. I used a black piece of plastic to block the window. And then I put the door in place. There was a bit of a gap behind the door, so I filled that in using the modeling compound. I used the same technique to paint the concrete as you might have seen in previous videos, but where I started with a black oil wash previously, I decided to use an acrylic wash here. Once that was dry, I went over the concrete again with a green and a brown wash. This will dull down as it dries and make it look like the concrete's been sitting outside for a while. To paint the plaster rocks, I'm going to use the leopard spotting technique, where I make a wash from a yellow, a brown and a bluish grey, which I apply to the rocks in spots, and then I go over the whole thing with a black wash to finish it off. The ground texture I used is a mix of spackle, paint, glue, water and coconut fiber. Then I painted the rails in the same color I used for the rust effects. 
Finally, it's time to apply some static grass, and the best way to do that is with a static grass applicator. I'll start with a short 2mm autumn grass from World War Scenics. But first we need to apply some PVA glue where we want the grass to stick. The applicator uses static electricity to make the grass stand up. I'm using a sheet of baking paper to catch the leftover static grass so it doesn't go to waste. While the glue was drying I painted the launch tube black. Next I'll add some 4mm summer grass. And lastly we'll finish with some 4mm dead grass. No point in having a missile silo if you don't have a missile to put in it, so I 3D printed a nose cone for a rocket. I chipped off a bit while removing the supports, but I don't think it'll be noticeable. Using my airbrush I painted it white, and I faded the bottom part to black to make it look like the rest of the missile is hidden in shadow inside the launch tube. I wanted the tip of the nose cone to be yellow, and I wanted to try a trick that I haven't tried before. You take a straw, dip it in paint, and place it over the tip of the nose. And voila! That worked perfectly. I was actually only expecting to get a line and that I'd have to fill in the rest myself, but it seems that the paint forms a film inside the tube which envelops the entire tip of the nose. There was a tiny bit of excess paint, but I removed that with a paper towel. And because I can't leave well enough alone, I decided to see if I could use the straw to make a line to separate the black and white parts, which didn't work out, but I managed to clean it up. Now all there's left to do is to place the missile in the launch tube. And now it's time to take a look at the final result. As always, thanks to my patrons who support the channel and a special thanks to Voyager who joined the channel recently. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.